Jesus, that's my cue. Evening, everybody. Evening, man. Yeah, well, I was looking at the our roster list, and it's getting shorter again. That's that's a sad thing. Let's all stand for prayer, please. Joe, would you lead us? Heavenly Father, we thank you, my God, this evening. Father, we, we raise our hands to the sanctuary. We shout to the Lord again today for the grateful, grateful heart, my Lord. We just thank you so much for the things that are flowing in our lives. Heavenly Father, most of all, that your love and your kindness, your grace and your mercy is upon us, my Lord. The mighty hand of Christ in our lives, Lord. And you're making things happen for us, my Lord. Even though we don't see them, we know that you're in control, my Lord. We know that you speak to the name of Jesus and things happen in our lives, Father. We thank you. These men of God has, has been in our lives all this time, of oh, my Lord, serving you, helping us, Father, to grow, to learn, true, some of uh, the word of true, sound doctrine, my Lord, to, to see their walk, Father, as they talk, it will reflect the life of Jesus Christ. And we just thank you so much for these men. We thank you for each and every guy here tonight. These men have come from a long way, Father, from a, a place of darkness, of oppression, and, and brokenness, my Lord. And you bring them now to your admirable light, Father. You do what you do best. You make miracles, my Lord. And Father, we believe in your word. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe there's still power in the blood. We believe that we have to put the cross, my Lord, and that we believe you hear our prayers tonight. So I pray to ask you, my God, with a, a full heart, humbly, that you will touch all of our lives tonight, that you will come down from your throne, my Lord, and sweep into our house today with that awesome, fresh fire from heaven, my King, and give us a new perspective of who you are, Father. You go from glory to glory, my King. We just thank you so much, Father, for this day. We thank you for being here before my rescue mission. Yes. Bless all our family that are outside, Father. Bless the petitions that come before your throne this evening. Oh, my God, bless the man of God as he comes forward to read the word. Father, use him as a powerful tool in your presence, my God. We thank you. Amen. 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 Before you sit down, why don't you come up and lead us in a couple of songs? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, my God. God bless everyone this evening. Hallelujah. God bless everyone this evening. God bless you. All right, all right. Praise the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to be here. I know sometimes uh, it's a wonderful thing to be here. It's a wonderful thing to be here. Hallelujah. Let's turn to page 352, please. my glasses right I forgot hallelujah praise the Lord let's let's give God a joyful sound tonight let's make all glad and the devil mad up in here bless you my king
Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's turn up to 233. Please be so kind. Yes, uh, let's shake the, the very gates of hell tonight that they know, they know we stand forth for the old rugged cross. Hallelujah. <clears throat>
my favorite ones. Anyone have any prayer requests? I know we got a lot of them. Yeah. Anybody want to start off? Martin? For my son and my family. Your son and your family, okay. For the, for the ledgers. For the ledgers? Rhonda? Pray for, go ahead. Henry? Rigoberto. Uh, for all my family and uh, everybody here in the campus, and uh, it's, uh, also I want to say thank you for uh, everybody for the prayers and uh, save my feet and uh, thank God I'm here again. Yeah. 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 Glad you're back. Glad you're feeling better. Doing better. I just told everyone that right before you left, I saw you laying out on the on the chairs one morning talking on the phone with your leg up and then your leg, man. I, you should have gone to the hospital then. I'm glad you're doing good, man. I'm gonna pray for, uh, pray for Doug and, and uh, Dave and Connie. Pray for Brother Jerome as he brings the message tonight. Pray for the guys in quarantine in dorm four. Dave Warren. Miss Christine, yeah, Dave Warren, and Arian Bajellis, and Gerald, and Sister yeah, Sister Foster, Brother Steve Short, Steve, huh? yeah, Stephen Short, yeah. Steve, yeah, and your father, who, Bill. No, he, oh, he said Miss Foster. Oh, unspoken. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see you. I need my glasses. There, my pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to pray, I'm, I'm serious, I'm going to pray that we all uh, pay attention to hand hygiene. I saw today that that was, you know, they have something every single day 7,000 times about something, but I saw today it was like the six major things that we need, everybody needs to watch for, and one of those six things was good, high, good hand hygiene. And it's every, almost every single time I go in the bathroom, somebody comes out of the stall and walks straight out the door without washing their hands. And I know when I came in, I see your pants down on your ankles, so I know you need to wash your hands. And you don't, so you need to be careful. I don't want this stuff. I'm sure no, nobody else wants it. So let's pray that we all start doing better, including I, I'm wearing our mask and doing what we can. So, I'm sorry. Anybody else? William? Yeah, I'd like to uh, pray for uh, our new president, that he can unite this country. Amen. And, uh, pray for the government. Stay in yep. Peace. Okay. Amen. All right, let's stand for prayer. Greg, would you lead us, please?
cases upon you and by your stripes that they are healed and we are healed, Father. I believe that report, Father. I stand on that report, Father, and I declare in Jesus' name that everyone here who had the COVID-19, Lord, that they will recover from, from it, each and every person that's on its grounds and off the grounds who have been here, Father. I pray, Lord, that as everybody searches for the vaccines and they search for, uh, for a cure, Father, that you have the cure, Father. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will just give us an answer, that you will rain down your blessings upon us, that you will uh, get rid of this disease, especially among us, Father. I pray, Lord, uh, uh, that this be the time that us Christians rise up and we do what we do best, and that's to kick out these sicknesses and diseases. This is our hour and our time, Father. We have the solution. And I pray right now for each and every person who has this disease, that the spirit man, I pray that the spirit man, the spirit woman will rise up and declare that they are healed by Jesus Christ. I pray for Henry and his wife and his children. I pray for reconciliation for them, Father, and that you continue protecting his family, Lord, while he's here doing your will, Father. I pray for our extended church family, each and every one of them, Lord. I pray that you keep your hand upon them and us, that no hurt, harm, or danger comes to them. Physically or spiritually, you continue taking care of each and every one of us, as your word says, Father. Your word says that you will give that uh, you will give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways, Father. And I thank you and I bless you, Lord. I pray for Steve's father. I pray, Lord, that you give him an extended life, Father. That you will uh, breathe the breath of air in his lungs and clear them out, Father. That you will do stuff miraculous, Father. That people will see it and they will say. Only Jesus could have done something like that. They would lead someone to Christ. Amen. Lord, Amen. In Jesus name. I pray, Lord, that you uh, that we will start to use wisdom in here. That we will wash our hands. That we will uh, we will uh, wash our faces. We'll be careful. Keep distance, Father. We have faith in your word, Father, that none of this trauma or none of this danger can hurt us, Father. But I pray that you give us wisdom so we will do what we need to do to Amen. avoid whatever the enemy has tried to do to try to take us out, Father. I pray for the government. I pray that um, the new government that came in, the new president, Father, that he will not uh, have any hard feelings towards anyone or anything that has happened in the past, and he will unite each and every one of us, Father. I pray, Lord, that you visit him tonight. And give him some type of dream to let him know, Father, that we are stronger together than we are apart, Father. And that each and every one of us will just uh, show a brotherly love like the word was preached the other day, Father. Unconditional love. I pray, Lord, that you anoint Brother Jerome in the, in the name of Jesus, the mighty man of God. I pray, Lord, that he will just speak your word, Father, and you will give him everything he needs from on high and download all, everything that... We need to know, Father, that we be doers of the word, not just hearers. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right. Can I have the ushers, please? That's amazing. That's very nice of him. Blessed Lord, we come before you once again as humble as we know how, thanking you for your grace, your mercy, your love, for we know that your banner over us is love, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you allow us to be participants in your kingdom. You allow us to give to you because you give so much to us. We thank you and we ask that you will bless those that give. You will bless those that want to give and don't have. Just bless everybody, Father, because we all need your blessing. We didn't. We're in a straight time right now with these diseases and all this crazy stuff that's going on. But, Lord, we know you can fix everything. Yes. And we yes. trust in you. We love you and we praise you, Father God, forever in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
enjoy that. I, no, no joke. I could, I could lay down and just turn the lights off and listen to that and, and really enjoy that and relax. That's nice. All right, Joe's going to lead us in another song. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Um, 625, sir. Let's turn our books to 625, please. Time for Jerome to bring us what God's put on his heart tonight. I'm, I appreciate him doing this in such short notice because I know Reverend Ledger was supposed to preach tonight, so I, I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank brother. You, brother. Good evening. Good what a joy. Amen. What a joy. I don't think we really understand or know the the joy or the I don't even know another word for it but 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 this is awesome though the 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 opportunities that we have to gather in the Lord's house 
to, to hear his word. And, and hearing the word of God does something to you. And, and that's what I'm going to speak on tonight. And as, as Brother Greg was praying tonight, and he said, let's not only be hearers, but also doers of the word. And I, and I told Steve, I said, that's what I'm preaching on tonight. And it is, it is so wonderful that, that the word of God clearly tells us we garner our faith by what? Hearing the word of God. But not only do we garner our faith from hearing the word of God, but if we're to grow, if we're to mature, we must hear his word, then we must do his word. You can't grow if you don't do his word. You won't grow. You won't grow. That's like planting a seed and don't water it. You don't give it sunshine. You don't speak to it. You don't give it love. It's not going to flourish. It's not going to flourish. And soon enough, it'll begin to die begin to die. So let's take full advantage of these opportunities that the Lord grants us. Yes, <laughs> these are precious moments. Absolutely. These are precious, precious moments. And let's not take them for granted. Amen. Let's not take them for granted. Because we all know, we have all have heard of cases where Loved ones have went to bed and never woke up, Amen. never woke up, never woke up. So, so let's take full advantage of what God has given us. Um, grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of James. The book of James. The book of James chapter 1. Book of James, chapter 1, starting at verse 22. In all actuality, the first of what well, the last nine, nine verses of James 1 deal with the conduct of true religion. And it tells us exactly what you have if you have true religion, of uh, the things that you're supposed to display or how you should conduct yourself if you are a true believer. I, sh I should put it that way. Uh, beginning at verse 22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful here, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed. And his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we bless thee. We thank thee. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord. We thank you for each and every soul present tonight. And blessed Father, we depend on you tonight, Lord. We depend on you to give me words to speak, Lord. And we ask, blessed Father, give us ears to hear, Lord. And give us a heart to receive, Lord. And above all, Lord, we're just asking for your empowerment, Lord. Your, your ability to enable us, Lord. And not only be here, Lord, but also doers, Lord. And for all that you do this evening, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. amen. So I look, when, I, when I look at verse 22 and I read verse 22, 
I read that as, as James is giving us a command. He's giving us a command to be, to be obedient. Giving us a command of action to be, to be obedient. We're to prove ourselves to be doers of the word. And not merely just hearers who deceive. Who deceive ourselves. And I like the fact that, that they use the looking glass. And each and every one of us, when we get up in the morning, we go to a mirror. And when we go to the mirror, we look for flaws. Amen. We look for things that we know have to be corrected before we step out in public. We're preparing ourselves to go before whoever. We're preparing ourselves. And likewise... It says here in, uh, in verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty is God's word. It's God's word. So if we look at ourselves in the mirror and we can see flaws, but if we walk away, if we walk away without correcting that flaw or those flaws, then we walk away stating that we are good. I believe I can continue on in whatever endeavors I have the way I look. No changes need to be made. No attitude adjustment. No behavioral changes. No nothing. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. And if you walk away without making any corrections, the word of God said you deceive yourself. You're deceiving yourself. And let's not, let's not think that, that none of us have flaws that we need to correct. Each and every one of us have something, have something that we can fix. Amen. And if we can't fix it, God can fix it. Yes. God can fix it. God knows. We're going to walk away from the mirror without doing it. He knows. That's why he said, well, if you look into the, the book of liberty, if you read my book, you will see that you have flaws. You will see it clearly. And I have the power to change it. But the key here, the key here, is that you must want those flaws to be corrected. You must want those flaws to be fixed. You have to be obedient. You have to be obedient to what you see when you look in the mirror. If you're not obedient to what you see, you're going to walk away. So that don't bother me. Likewise, when you hear God's word, Likewise, when the Spirit of God is speaking to your heart, when you walk away. You're deceiving yourself. That's your opportunity to get something fixed. God had just set the mirror before you. God had just told you, I can fix what's ailing you. My Spirit has touched you. Based on what you've just heard, I want to help you. I want to fix you. The scripture doesn't teach salvation by works, nor does it teach salvation for those who don't obey God. A true believer, a true believer submits to God's word, to God's authority. And we comply with all of God's directions, with all his directives. God wants us all, God wants all hearers to become disciples. Amen. And what is in a disciple? An obedient follower of Christ. Amen. We can't get by obedient. That's a must. 
If you're going to follow anyone, you have to be obedient to their leadership, to their guidance. If you're not, you're just a rogue. <laughs> you're on your own. We must be obedient. We must put ourselves in submission. And, 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 and I want to make this clear. God hasn't made his word. God hasn't made Jesus available just for interesting reading. No. Oh. No. Jesus didn't come to earth to die just to be interesting. Just to be a something that, oh, I guess I'll do a paper on Jesus today to see what he was all about. No. No. It was much deeper than that. Amen. Much deeper than that. He came to save your soul, Amen. to save your soul. And oftentimes we, we, we say Jesus came to, to save your life. In essence, yes. In essence, yes. But he came to save your soul. He came to save your soul. Because your life is going to, your physical life is going gonna, is gonna to end. It's going to end. So he didn't come to save that. He came to save your soul. And I, think, and I think if we start to look at it from that perspective, it'll give you a different avenue. So we have to come to grips that we will die, that we're going to perish, but our soul will live on. Our soul will live on. And if you want your soul to be with Jesus Christ, then there's something you're going to have to do. There's something you're going to have to do. Not only must you hear his word, but you also must do his word. Do his word. You can't garner salvation without doing what the call of salvation tells you to do. It's active. It's active. Being a doer of God's word don't stop when you kneel. It just begins. It just begins. That's the start place. That's the start point. When we read God's word, God's word is, is preparing us for action. God's word only flourishes in the enriched soul of true obedience. To think otherwise, we're, you, we are deceiving ourselves. We must put into practice what we have learned, what we have heard. Only then can God's truth resonate in us. Only then can we hold possession of God's truth. The word clearly teaches us obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. 2 Peter 3 and 18. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful verse. Grow in grace and in the knowledge. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The difference between hearing and doing. And as, as I've given us the, the example of the mirror, there, 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 there are negative examples. The purpose of a mirror is to see yourself, to make us clean and neat and all those types of things, to clean us up. And as we look into God's word, we see ourselves as we really are. The mere hearer of the word does something similar. He hears the word, it is soon forgotten. The word has no abiding influence. Hearing without doing is of little or no benefit. And I liken that to, to someone finished running a marathon, he's thirsting. 
you give him a bottle of water. And if he doesn't take the top off that water, that bottle of water will do him no good. It will do him no good. Just about everything we do in this life requires an action to get something accomplished. I would say everything we do requires an action. Everything we do requires an action. It is implied here that the word of God is the spiritual counterpart to the mirror. It presents a correct and complete image of the face of the soul. The mirror reveals not only what we actually are, it shows also what we can become by the grace of God. And, and, and it is so true. And I remember when I was uh, dorm captain in dorm one. And we had a couple pretty boys in the dorm. And what I mean by that, they would stay in the mirror, man, for 35, 40 minutes, man, until every hair was, was just right, you know, you know. And they weren't going to leave until it was that way. And that's what the word of God does. It reveals, it reveals who you are. And, and, and oftentimes I wonder about those that stay in the mirror for so long. If you would stay in God's word for that amount of time every day, I can only imagine, I can only imagine how pretty you'll be. It's amazing. It's amazing what we'll do for physical beauty and we don't give a, a, a second thought for spiritual beauty. Spiritual beauty isn't seen. Spiritual beauty doesn't have a price tag. Spiritual beauty won't get me anything. I beg to differ. Spiritual beauty gets you a home in heaven. <laughs> I beg to differ. I beg to differ. But you understand what I'm saying. Let's spend less time on the physical. Let's spend more time on the spiritual. That is, that is your true essence. That is who you are. And God knows that. That's why he came. That's why he suffered and died. Because he know who you are. And he does not want you to leave here without you knowing you're a true person. Amen. Not knowing who you truly are. Amen. And not knowing who you belong to. Mm. Who you belong to. And I think sometimes we, we think that when we say we are blood brought, that, that, that we're only talking about those that are Christians. And, 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 and I believe in some area that is true. But Jesus shed his blood for everybody. Amen. Everybody. The shed blood of Jesus was for everybody. Everybody. That's why we all belong to Jesus. Because he died for everybody. He died. But if you already accepted that shed blood, you hold a special place. Yes. Yes. You hold a special place. Blessed abiding. The one who looks intently at the perfect law of liberty abides in it. And by it, not becoming a forgetful hearer, but a doer. And the word tells us this man will be blessed in what he does. This man will be blessed in what he does. Why? Because we're continually to proclaim what? The word of God. We're acting upon the word of God to proclaim it. To keep it going forth. To share it. To encourage. To edify. To build up. The doer of the word carefully considers 
what he hears, being mindful of its impact. What are the actions of obedient hearers? And if you're like me, you do a mental study. You do a spiritual study. You begin to see things more clearly. You begin to know things better. You begin to to have a desire to learn how to walk. And all these things I'm speaking of is spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. Once you become a child of God, things change. Your outward behaviors change. You don't walk around with swag anymore. You don't walk around with your, with your pants down by your ankles. No. No, 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 no. We don't do that. Our conversation changes. Everything, everything changes. We begin to look at each other differently. We don't see the bad. We see the good. We see potential. We don't see the bad. Because if we did that, we'll be seeing ourselves. Contrary to public opinion, God's word don't put fetters on people. God's word liberates. The word is called perfect because it is without error. It provides everything man needs for faith and practice in living the Christian life. It provides everything. There's no need to go to Walmart every two weeks to go shopping. There's no need. You never run out of groceries. You never never run out of words to read or what to pray about or what to meditate on. Only those who live in accordance with God's law are truly free. The doer of the word not only looks into the law of liberty, he remains and abides in it. Those who don't abide become forgetful hearers. The act of obedience carries in it a blessing. Jesus closed his sermon on the mount with the illustration found in Matthew 7 and 24. And therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Praise God. Praise God. Only obedience to the word builds a life on Jesus, the rock of ages. God's word is a mirror. It shows us what our sins and and what we can be in Christ's righteousness. Remember, the more time you spend looking into God's mirror, the more you should reflect Jesus' image. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Every time we pick up the word of God, every time we pick up the word of God and read it, we should start reflecting Jesus' image. You can't call yourself a Christian if you're not reflecting Jesus' image. You're carrying Jesus' name. (laughs) You're carrying his name. You're carrying Christ. We come to church, and we hear, and we hear, and I thank God for that. But we have to put those, those words into action. Put them into action. And I also want you to understand that once we meet Jesus, everything, everything that we have done in life, everything we didn't do in life, 
everything we heard in life, we were held accountable for it. We were held accountable for it. So each and every one of you tonight, whatever I said tonight, you're held accountable for it. You're held accountable for it. So we all want to do better. We all want to be better people. We all want to be better fathers and better brothers. And we should. And we should. But I say, in order to be better, we must reflect Jesus. We must reflect Jesus. If we're not an image of Jesus, we just tread water. Amen. When you tread water, you don't get anywhere. You stay in place. And if you don't have Jesus, need I say more? Need I say more? Your destination is already uh, paid up. Already paid up. Already paid up. But again, I thank you. I thank you for your, for your time and for your diligence. But let's be hearers. Let's be hearers. Because through hearing, you garner faith. But once you hear something that touches your soul, that touches you, that makes you move, do something about it. Do something about it. Do something about it. Amen? Amen. All right, let's stand. Heavenly Father, we bless thee. We thank thee tonight, Father. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercies, Lord. We thank you for thy loving kindness. And blessed Father, as we go our separate way tonight, Lord, we're just asking, Lord, that you would be with each and every one, Lord. And as we prepare our heads for slumber, Lord, get alongside each and every one of us, Lord. Whisper into our ears, Lord. Let each and every one know how much you love them, Lord. And that out of that, Lord Jesus, they will be able to say, I love you too, Lord. And in that, Lord, they will begin to draw nigh, Lord. And your word tells us if we draw nigh to you, then you will draw nigh to us, Father. And I thank you for that promise, Lord. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Bless us. Protect us, Lord. Awaken us in the morning, Lord, afresh and anew. And for all that you do, Father. We give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.